Well, hey, welcome to this episode of Tech Tuesday. My name is Laura Wells, and I am so excited for you to see this episode because it is a topic that I've been wanting to share with you for quite a while because I use this so often in my own business, and that is the topic of how to create and share personal videos using your app. I'm going to show you how to do these in a really simple way. So even if you are not tech savvy, you are going to totally get this. You're going to love it. And I even have a bonus tip for you at the very end of this video and you are going to freak out. It is so awesome. I can't wait for, for you to figure out this out and do all of these fun things. Okay. So this is the actual video that I use quite a lot. I have a, a, a bunch of them in the hopper here in my app, right? But this one in particular is the one that in 60 seconds, I share my personal Thrive experience. I recorded this using Instagram stories. Yes, Instagram stories. And I'm gonna show you why here in just a second because it's gonna make your life so much easier and you're gonna feel like you could do like 100 of these videos because it really is so easy and it takes little to no time. Now. This is the video that I actually use and it's got the captions on it. It's loaded into my app and I want you to see basically the finished product, but I'm going to take you on a little field trip here in just a second to my Instagram stories. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do this. Okay. So let's go behind the scenes a little bit <laughs> and go onto Instagram stories. Now, if you're not familiar with Instagram stories, all you do is go to your Instagram app and click the plus sign in the middle and click like you're uh, doing a new story and go into selfie mode and you're gonna, hi, <laughs> you're gonna go into like where you're talking in stories. Click the little carrot and click hands free. That's gonna make it a lot easier. And then just hold the shutter down for a couple seconds. It's gonna begin a three, two, one countdown. And then blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you can start talking as a talking story. Now let me pause here a second because I want to give you some video etiquette tips. And this is not just for when you're doing Thrive Connect video messages like this. This is just in general, anytime you're doing a video and specifically like Facebook Live, Instagram Live, YouTube videos, you know, things like that are really important to make the person behind the screen feel connected to you. There are people behind those pixels. I say that all the time and anytime in my social media coaching or trainings, and it's really important that when you're on video, look them in the lens. I like to say you're really looking at people in the eyes. You're making eye contact through the camera. And similarly, when you're talking to the camera, on a Facebook Live or Instagram Live, YouTube and so forth, you wouldn't want to wait a few seconds for people to hop on. The main reason is because in the first couple of minutes, you are maybe talking to quote unquote dead air when you're on a live video. Yes, before people hop on. But you have to understand about 80% of your overall views on your videos are coming from replay. And so the replay viewers are catching your video from the very first second that a video starts. So if we, what you're doing is if you're waiting for a couple minutes until people hop on your video, you're actually kind of like being disingenuous to those replay viewers and you're kind of boring them and making them feel like, well, I have to sit here and wait for a couple minutes until she had like the important people to hop on. <laughs> I know that's not what you want and that's not what you mean, but that is the perception in terms of video etiquette. So it's just a good rule of thumb and it's a really good habit to get into. When you first start your video, start right away, no dead air, just jump right into your topic and be excited knowing full well that no one is watching your live video until people start hopping on, but pretty much everybody watches the replay, right? So the reason I'm sharing that on this video and on this topic is because when you're doing a talking story, it's the same way on Instagram stories, Facebook stories, and so forth. When you're doing a talking story, jump right in. You don't just want to say, well, I just wanted to pop on. Don't mind my hair. You know, all that kind of stuff. All that kind of stuff is like dead air. Video etiquette is really important where you jump right in, give them value, get them engaged, make them feel like you're talking to them one on one, look them in the lens, be personal. And so what I mean by that, too, is that when you're addressing people, just like when I addressed you onto this video, I'm so glad you're here. I'm literally excited that you are here. It's just you and I on this video. I'm talking directly to you. I want you to comment and let us know what you think about this video. I really want to know your thoughts. And just like that, I want you to go onto your talking stories as if you're talking to that one person. It really should feel like a FaceTime. It should feel like just you're talking to your friend. Like, I can't wait to share what happened yesterday. Oh my gosh, you're never going to believe this. This is the craziest thing. You're never going to believe what happened to me yesterday. 
that kind of thing is a lot more of relationship building and trust building than you being on a video and saying, Hey, everybody, Hey, y'all, um, that kind of stuff, because although it's probably comfortable in conversation, it actually makes the viewer think, well, she's not really talking to me, so she doesn't care if I bounce, <laughs> right? So the reason I'm sharing that on this topic, on this video, is because when you're making these videos, loading them into your app, you have to keep in the back of your mind that the purpose of these videos is going to be messaged directly one-on-one -on -one to the recipient. So it's important that these videos feel like they were truly made for that one person. So you wouldn't wanna do a talking story and save that to your camera roll for the purpose of this, sending it through the app and having it say something like, hey everybody, I wanted you to know about this promo. Because when you text that to that one person, they're gonna feel like, well, hey everybody, I thought she said this was a personal video message for me. That's weird. Is this like some kind of list that I'm on? Do you see how that can spiral out and make that person feel like it's not really just for them. And it really isn't that important if they take action or reply or click the link or whatever it is that you're asking them to do. Right. So just some quick tips about video etiquette. And in general, I feel like that'll help you a lot on the next Facebook live that you do on Instagram live is in talking stories, make it personal, make them feel like it's really just you and them, just like it's you and me just sitting here talking on this video together right now in this episode. Another quick tip is to keep it short. <laughs> so I will keep moving on to the next one, but you know, on these videos for the app, you want to keep it under three minutes because you can't let, upload a video to the app that's over three minutes. Um, in general, I like to keep my talking videos for a video message through the app at about 60 seconds, which is one frame on an Instagram story video. So in the name of keeping it short, let's move on to the next slide and I'll show you exactly how to do this. So when you go into your stories and create your video, You'll notice here that I created captions and I'm saving it to my camera roll. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do the captions here, just in case, again, if you're not really familiar or tech savvy um, with the Instagram Stories app itself, because camera, the camera roll, you're gonna have these videos loaded in here, okay? And they're gonna save onto your camera roll but you want to save them into your camera roll after you put the captions on the video. The reason you want captions is because, well, two reasons. One, you're probably going to have people in the deaf community who really find it very discouraging when there's not captions on your videos. You want to be as inclusive as you possibly can. I have a lot of people in the deaf community who watch my videos because I really try very hard. If it's available as a feature, I load captions in any way that I possibly can. I've even paid for services to load transcriptions <laughs> to my videos on YouTube. It's really important that you're inclusive if you possibly can do that. Thankfully, because of these apps, Instagram specifically, there's an actual caption sticker where you don't have to pay anything. It's free. You can just do it right inside of Instagram stories. And that's why I choose that. The other reason is because, well, just quite frankly, a lot of people watch videos with their sound off. Nowadays, about 80% statistically of people who watch videos watch it with no sound. So it, captions actually help people stay on your video, engage longer um, than videos without any captions. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. On Instagram stories, you're going to click the stickers icon and you'll see a little sticker that says captions like this. Once you're, once you've gotten your story loaded or your talking story loaded, all you do is click the sticker icon and then click on the caption sticker and it will automatically transcribe your video that you're speaking in and give you captions just like that. After you load your captions, then you just hit save and you've got your video on your camera roll. Now, ta-da! <laughs> now you've got your video in your camera roll and it looks just like this and it has captions already on it. This is just, you can actually just keep this in your camera roll for whatever you need it for. You can load it as a talking reel. You could put it on TikTok. You could upload it as a YouTube short. You could load it on Pinterest. You could do whatever you want with it. I personally use a lot of these for various things. You can do the work once and repurpose it several times. I just feel like that's working smarter, not harder. But for this purpose, we're going to load it into the app. So go over to the app and click My Media and then Video. Upload from your gallery, which is kind of like your photo album. Find your video and upload it. Now, thumbnails. Let's talk about that for a second. It's going to automatically choose a thumbnail from your video, and most of them is going to they're going to look wonky. Okay, just because of sizing. So you can actually create your own thumbnail. You can choose you know, Canva to make your thumbnails. I tried a couple different dimensions. I used one that was like an Instagram size thumbnail. 
and it still looked a little bit wonky because you can see that it has like a thin uh, a thin dimension where it's going to choose that for you and kind of chop my head off there. So I actually found that the Facebook dimension size inside of Canva works really well. The blog dimension size works really well too. You just want to play with it and find the one that works best for you. That one looks a little bit better. So once you um, upload your thumbnail and edit it and kind of move it around, then you'll wanna put a title on your video. And remember, they can see, so if you're texting this, you, the person, the recipient can see the title of your video. So just kind of keep that in mind, as well as the description. So type in something like, I'd love to help if you have any questions, that sort of thing, they can see that as well. And then you're gonna hit next. And I'm gonna show you a bonus tip here in just a second. You are gonna freak out. So I'm gonna pause this video here. I'm gonna leave that alone for now, but wait, there's more. Stay tuned, because I'm gonna show you just in a couple slides this bonus tip that is gonna blow your mind. I don't think I've ever told, I've never done a training on this bonus tip. Um, and I actually am not sure that very many people know about it. So it's very cool. So hang on one second, because I'm gonna show you what they see when they actually tap on your video and watch, this is your personal video message to them. When they tap it, after you've texted it to them and they open it, this is what they see. They see your personal message along with the green buttons at the bottom prompting them to, of course, you know, get more information, click to shop and all that sort of thing. Now, listen, <laughs> one more video that I think you want to know about that you can use for this, and that is your Instagram Reels. Yes, I said Instagram Reels. And how does that play into it? I'm going to show you here in just a second. One of the things that I think is really cool is that when you're, you know, if you're going to take the effort and do an Instagram reel, some of them are really great. Some of them are talking reels. Some of them are fun, like product announcements or something like you're making a shake and trying a new, you know, putting cafe inside of candy cane. By the way, if you haven't tried that yet, it is really good. You need to do that. Um, but, you know, things like that, if you're making it into a reel, you can always repurpose it into using it as a personal video message. Well, one of the big things about Instagram Reels is that they have watermarks on them. Well, go into Canva and you can actually go into Canva and create a new Instagram Reel. Okay, it's going to give you the dimensions. So it's going to give you like a blank canvas for an Instagram Reel. Scroll to the bottom toolbar and click that waffle icon and go to your apps and select the Instagram app. You're going to need to connect it just once. You don't have to do this every time, but connect it just once. Now, every time you do this, all of your reels and posts pop up right there in your Canva. And so if you'll notice this, it does not have a watermark on it. Is that not cool or what? Then you just expand it so it fills out the Instagram reel canvas. And then you can just literally download it right there to your camera roll. So all you have to do is just hit that little icon at the top and save it. So it's going to save. It's going to take a couple seconds to save and download into your camera roll. And it's going to download as an MP4. So that's a video file. And you can just save that right there into your camera roll. Now, again, you're doing this in Canva. Okay, so we're going to hop over to Canva, click the apps icon, connect Canva to Instagram. And you're only going to have to do that one time. Now, every time you log into Canva, you're going to have that waffle icon where you can go to your apps, click Instagram, all of your posts will appear and it's instant. If you upload a Instagram reel um, and then you hop over to Canva, it's going to be there. It automatically syncs and connects for you. Is that not cool or what? And there's no watermarks and it's free. You don't have to pay anything, obviously, other than if you have Canva Pro, but it's included in that. So you don't have to pay any extra fees to remove the watermarks from your Instagram reels forever and ever. You're welcome. It's the coolest thing ever, but that's not the cool tip that I'm about to show you. So this video now is in your camera roll. Okay. So just like the other one, you can upload that you know, as a my media, as a video message, upload that and send it off. And those are great. But let's level it up a little bit. You can go in there and you can add links and embed them right into your video. So all you have to do at that bottom section is click on a link, add whatever link that you want. So you can click like my fresh meals. This is a meals video that I did a reel. So you can put your link directly to your page for whatever your sharing. Okay. Um, now you can, of course, leave it as a link icon and put the colors, different colors, different things like that. What I personally like to do is I, I like to use text so that I can put like a call to action. So I could put like tap to see the menu and put the little menu, little food emoji right there. <laughs> so you can change the color of the text too. we will make this one like black, black and white. 
You can also, of course, um, I love the little uh, transparency slider. So you can kind of change and alter the transparency. I like the little circle thing. It kind of makes this like pulsing circle. It calls attention like click me, click me. Now you can pinch or expand this so that, you know, you can also decide like where on the screen it is. We're going to put this at the bottom so it doesn't overlap my words. But get this, when you choose this, of course, this is saving. It's going to take us a couple seconds to save. So don't think that anything's wrong. It's a big video that you just brought over here. But now look what happens when they receive this video. This is what they see on their end. It's going to play with the music and everything. And when they click that, see how it's pulsing in that circle? When they click that link, this is the coolest thing. It takes them over to your website. Now, this whole thing is connected to you. This whole thing is cookied to you if they go over to liveowl.com, but if they click that from the video, boom, that's where they go directly to whatever page that you're trying to send them to. So think about how creative you can get with this kind of thing, right? If you are, for example, making your shake in the morning and you added boost to your shake and you want to use that and you're doing it in your stories, for example, you could save that story to your camera roll. If it's like a time lapse or something, right? I'm just kind of off the top of my head, giving you some ideas. You could do a time lapse of you making your shake, adding your boost to your shake mix, save that whole story to your camera roll, hop over to your Thrive Connect app, upload it as a My Media in the video section, just like I taught you. And then you could put a link right there in that video showing them, hey, click here to add boost, click here to check out boost. Um, and you can literally text that to somebody to maybe one of your customers who's never tried boost. And you can say, I just discovered something super cool. You've got to try this. And you know, it's and be, you know, personal in that message to them and say, you know, um, this is a green strength that doesn't taste like dirt, <laughs> you know, cause it's really good. If people always assume, you know what I mean? Or like if you're making your candy cane shake and you sprinkled some cafe into it, people don't know what they don't know. They don't realize how amazing that is. And so when you do that, you could send them that text message and then link them directly to the page on our website for cafe, link them directly on the page to boost. You could do this for pretty much anything. So get super creative. So anytime my rule of thumb is if you're going to the effort of making video content, especially where it's good content, don't just put it in your stories and then let it expire. Save those things to your camera roll and repurpose them. You can send them as personal video messages. Again, going back to the beginning, especially if you're doing talking stories and they're personal and they feel like they're one on one conversation, you can also do that so that you can save that to your camera roll and send that as a personal video message right through your Thrive Connect app. Was this helpful? Did you love this? I'm really excited that you're tuning into these episodes. Let us know, please, in the comments, let us know if there's any topics that you really want to know how to do on your app or really anything other than, you know, the app techie wise, anything like that. You're just like, I don't know how to do this kind of stuff on my phone or whatever. We really would love your feedback. So leave us a comment. Let us know. Are these helpful? Are you trying these tips? What have you done so far? What would you want to know? And I'm really excited that you're here and watching these episodes and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good day.